Hey guys, Sandy here and welcome back to another video for Brutus Monroe. Today I'm going to be scrapbooking some photos when we went to Monterey Bay. I'm not exactly sure which ones I'm going to use yet, but it's going to be some combination of these three. I have some of the stamps stamped out and ready to be fussy cut from the stamp sets. They'll be linked down below. The names are escaping me right now. I've also got the 6x6 border stamp set I'm going to do some fun things with. I have the Wave stencil, some glitter stock, and some aqua pigments so I can make some sort of fun background. So let's see what I can do. Now the first thing I'm going to do is take some of my white cardstock and my various shades of blue aqua pigments and go ahead and create myself a mixed media background. Now I'm starting with the light color first and normally I would start with the darker and bring the light color on top of it but this lighter color has a lot of metallic and I wanted the metallic to show through from the underneath. So that's why I went ahead and did it that way. I make a little bit of a mess in my palette, but that's okay. I am just using a really cheap, like cheap, no name. This is the kind of paintbrush that you would give a three-year-old to play with kind of brush. Um, and I'm not really treating it nicely. And I do do this with my brushes quite often. I treat them kind of miserably, but I don't use my like my good quality brushes to do this. I use my cheaper brushes, the ones that if I ruin them, I'm okay if I have to throw them out. So I'm just building the color uh, with my aqua pigments and then you can kind of see the metallic shine poking through. I'm really happy with this one. I really like the way that it turned out. I definitely have an ocean kind of flavor to it and that makes me happy. I do grab some fine liner markers and I'm going to go ahead and color in all of my tiny stamped images. And I'm not going to make you watch me color all this because it does take a little bit to color. I'm not doing any kind of blending. I'm not doing any kind of shading. I am straight coloring with fine liners uh, because the stamped images are smaller and the fine liners go in great in the little areas. I'm not really doing any kind of fanciness at all. The only thing I'm doing is sometimes I swipe the marker across my little sheet of background paper right here just so I can see what the color is because I do want the colors to coordinate. Um, I haven't used any kind of special cardstock either that I'm um, coloring in these stamped images with. It's just straight white cardstock. Now since these images are so tiny, I do pull out my Brutus Monroe uh, detail scissors here. They are super sharp and they feel good in my hand, so they work very well with fussy cutting. I think it is super important to make sure that your uh, things work with fussy cutting. And these are my usual scissors and I wanted to see if my usual scissors would do the same kind of fussy cutting um, on such tiny little things uh, as the detail scissors. And there were some things where I definitely could use my regular old scissors and then there were some like the crab where I needed the detail scissors because the crab legs were so tiny that I needed tiny blades to get in there. I am taking this stencil right here and I'm super, super excited about this stencil. I'm just taking some alabaster ink and stenciling right through it with a foam dauber. I'm not really worried about the stencil lining up. I'm not worried about, you know, not having overlap. I'm not worried about any of that because this is supposed to kind of give you the thought and mimic the effect of the ocean. And you know, the ocean is a wild, wild beast. So I'm totally cool with how my background is turning out. I'm just trying to figure out what photos I want to use now and how I'm going to use this six by six stamp and what I'm going to do to make it pop over top my photos. Cause I know I want to kind of treat it as not, not as a photo mat, but kind of as a little photo overlay. And it's just a matter of trying to figure out which uh, ones I'm going to do. Ultimately, I decide to do those two photos, one where I'm touching the ocean and one where I have some pretty rocks. 
I grab my aqua pigments and I am just going to paint in this stamped stencil right here. My aqua pigments are in kind of rainbow order in this plastic bin. As you can see, I don't have room for any more and my neon aqua pigments came in the mail and they can't even live with the other aqua pigments now because I don't have the room. I definitely use some colors more than other, like my red is almost halfway gone. Uh, my That light metallic blue, kind of like that sky blue, I don't remember what the color is, that was an aqua pigment of the month, that one's halfway gone. So I definitely use colors, some colors more than others. And then look, you can actually mix aqua pigments together to create new colors, which is awesome. Don't want anyone to think that like this is the only pink I can use and this is the only purple. Mix those suckers together, create new colors, and get them on your projects. I want it to um, have lots of different colors for the corals uh, down here that I'm coloring and uh, they just turn out great. I just think that it turns out great. I am super happy with the way this looks. I'm not being too terribly particular with my coloring and I'm not, you know, filling in all the lines just perfectly. If I was giving this as a gift, if I was putting this on a card, <laughs> I mean, that's laughable. I probably would never do this on a card because my card making is, you know, almost non-existent. I make cards when I need to, but um, I just love scrapbooking that much. That's my jam. That's my paper crafting jam. Um, but if I was doing this as a gift, it, it would be much, much more detail oriented. However, this is in my own personal scrapbooks and I'm just having fun with it. I'm not, I'm not worried about what it looks like for someone else. I'm not worried if I have a little bit that goes out of the lines. Um, imperfection is beauty and that's all I have to say about that. I am using a water brush to paint in with this. There is a slight amount of water in my water brush, um, but I'm not like squeezing it to bring water out to kind of um, like water down the aqua pigments whatsoever. I just happen to be using a water brush. Now I am going to take some clear embossing ink and I place that over top of the entire thing and then I dip that bad boy in some clear embossing powder as well. I am going to heat set it and this is my favorite part. I just love embossing. I love how it turns from this like this kind of cloudy thing where your embossing powder is over top of your image and then when you heat it up it just gets all shiny and smooth and melty like I just love that I am a super fan of that now I am back to my background and I decided to place it on top of a black piece of cardstock in kind of a wonky angle um, I am a fan of the wonky angles lately I just think it adds a little bit of extra interest to your page without like a whole lot of work it's a, and I think it's a pretty big impact for minimal work. I mean, I, I have to cut a couple edges. That's, that's not bad at all. I do pull out my Brutus Monroe 6x6 papers. I'm just trying to build up some more interest. I am using the Jawbreaker uh, paper collection and also the, uh, mm, the watercolor, is it the watercolor camp? No, watercolor galaxy. I will have um, the paper pads linked down below. I can't remember exactly off of the top of my head. So I am using some more of those pre-stamped images. I felt like I needed to bring in a little bit more coral. So I went ahead and colored those in with aqua pigments and heat embossed it just like I did the big one. Now the color of the coral is similar but not the exact same. And I'm just using some more of the paper pads to punch out and create a little cluster uh, right here. Something is feeling off with me um, about the little papers that I have up there over top of the black cardstock. Ultimately, those are going to get switched down. I'm going to change them down to the bottom. I do take all those tiny little stamped images that I colored and I am creating mini scenes with them around the coral. So I have it up here in that little cluster that I created and then I'm also building up the coral down here over top of my photos and I just really really like the way that it did and I have to say that little red crab up there on the left corner right there just brings me so much joy so I am a Maryland girl living in California and let me tell you guys if you have never had the pleasure of having Maryland blue, cra blue crabs you are missing out 
I am just going to straight up tell you, you are missing out. And if you are anywhere else in the country and you order Maryland crab cakes, 99% of the time, those crab cakes on that menu are not Maryland crab cakes. Let me just tell you that. And I'm just going to put that out there. Like, you just don't know. You just don't know. And um, so if you're ever in Maryland, you need to get yourself a good Maryland crab cake and you need to have some Maryland blue crabs. Because out here in California, we don't got the same kind of crabs over here, people, and they're not as good. I'm just going to put that out there. They are not as good. So that little crab right there, uh, I don't care even if he's supposed to be a Dungeness crab or something like that. Guess what? That guy right there, he's a Maryland blue crab. Okay? I mean, he's a cooked Maryland blue crab because he's red. Um, but, I mean, he's on there and he's a Maryland blue crab. Um at the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, I, that, that, little, that little nugget of happiness has made my day while I was making this layout and I just wanted to share it with you guys. You might be thinking, whoa, Sandy's a psycho, or you might be thinking, yeah, Sandy, right on, girl. So whichever way you're thinking, <laughs> that, that's cool with me. Um, so as you can see, I wasn't happy with the papers that were up there on the black cardstock, so I decided to bring them down uh, over top of my photo mats. Now I am using a Brutus Monroe uh, stamping block right here, which I was super excited to get um, in the mail. I ordered it and it has some grid lines on it and it's a good size that you can use like with little stamps, you can use it with bigger stamps. It just, it just makes me happy um, because my bigger acrylic block that I had was very thin and kind of, kind of, eh, it didn't have lines or anything like that. So it wasn't, wasn't really making me happy, so I went ahead and um, ordered one. Really happy about that. I am adding some tiny word phrases right here, and these are just phrases that I think will go along with this layout. Um, it, there, it, I mean, it's not saying anything like Marilyn Blue Crabs are the best or anything like that, but you know, <laughs> it's okay. Now I am going to put them in a couple little places. Um, I just, I'm just giving words to this page because of my mixed media background. I'm really not going to do a lot of journaling on this particular page. And that is just because my, my background is just a big part of the layout and I'm not going to write over top of it. That is because I have other photos for this exact trip. I have other photos with this exact, you know, these exact moments in time. So I'm not worried about not having journaling on this particular page. I think sometimes we are so worried about, you gotta tell the story, you gotta tell the story, you gotta tell the story. Well, you know what? Sometimes the story is just the photos. And sometimes the story is on one layout, even though you have photographs to fill five layouts. Like do what makes you happy with your scrapbooking and tell your story the way you wanna tell your story. Now I decided that I didn't really like the CA that I had stamped down. It just wasn't, it just wasn't umphy enough. Like it didn't have enough umph behind it. So I went ahead and stamped the CA with embossing ink on top of black cardstock and I embossed it. So the CA are, they're a little bit shiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these on top of um, the CA that I stamped on. It just wasn't dark enough. It just didn't give me the umph that I wanted, but this gives me the umph that I wanted. So I'm happy with that. I'm adding a little bit more adhesive uh, down to make sure that my backgrounds stay together. And then I'm going to add some of the sequins that came in one of the inspiration boxes that I get each month. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember which inspiration box this was, um, but there it is. They did come in an inspiration box. They got some cool colors. I decided to pull out the teal ones and I'm just doing a couple little sequins um, at each cluster and kind of, maybe kind of, they look a little bit like sea bubbles to you. Maybe that was kind of the effect I was reaching for. If it doesn't, then they can just be pretty sequins on the page, but I was going for sea bubbles. I do take my pen and outline um, where the black cardstock and my background meet, and I just pin in three tiny little fishes up there uh, at the top, and I think that that just adds a little bit. 
Now, I'm super happy with this layout. The background just makes me ridiculously happy. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure that you click subscribe and then you ring the bell so that you get notifications. And I will see you guys again real soon for another video.